Hi, I'm Keith Carter and welcome to the HSB Academy tutorial session. In this session, we're going to learn about creating a pocket. We use pockets in HSB stick frame in order to create a cutout in a stick frame wall where we would have a beam. And we're going to dig in here now and see how to do that. So here in front of me, you can see that I have just a simple uh, four set of walls with a beam. And if we take a look at the result that we have here, you will see that it's just a beam that's hovering currently um, at the top of the wall. So just clearly we can see that we need to create a pocket detail in this particular area here. So first thing I'm just going to do for pure clarity is I'm going to take away the, um, the walls and we're now going to use the HSB console and for the HSB console I'm going to for now this wall that we have here is number three so we're going to turn off all walls at bar number three in this instance here so let's take a look and see what we can actually do with creating a pocket so we find the pocket in our stick frame ribbon and here is the pocket tool and always follow the, the instructions on the bottom left of the screen. It'll tell you exactly what to do. So you can see down here, it's asking me to select an item container. So we select that item container. I'm going to go finish and I'm going to pick this particular beam and finish as well. Now paramount to all these similar tools, you'll be presented with a similar dialog box with a number of settings inside here. And these settings will all have a, a value and a, an option to do something with them. So for example, when we start looking through some of these settings, you can add a header on top of your pocket. You may want to add a sill into your pocket. I'm gonna say that's true for now. You might like to have a header gap in your, in your uh, header detail. I'm gonna leave this as zero. I'm not using any header in this case, so I'm going to leave that as the default beam. And if you remember from our earlier sessions on the framing styles editor, you know that we have an inventory system and here you can set up a particular type of beam that you want to use in your solution. So, so we continue on and currently I'm going to say that I'm going to use three studs for underneath my beam and maybe I want to offset from the alignment. I'm not going to offset for the moment, but this would allow me to offset the pocket away from the center line of the beam in this case. Again, it's asking me similar to the header sill. Do I want a gap? And let's just say I'm going to put in a five mil gap. We're going to see the result of this gap in a few minutes as we set it up. And finally, do I want to split either the bottom plate or the top plate? Yes, I do. I'm going to say true to the top plate. And then I say okay to this and with all of these tools you get a very similar type of uh, scenario where it puts in the tool recognition here and this is representing the pocket in this particular scenario here. Now just for pure um, purposes of viewing this we're going to first generate the wall and when I'm finished generating the wall you will see that it creates a pocket in the wall and I'm going to flip this particular wall on the front view here so that we can see what exactly has happened. So if you remember I created a sill tolerance gap of five millimeters and that is that five millimeters so from the bottom of the beam itself it's now created a five mil gap. You remember I put in the studs as well as three number studs and I'm naming all of these values here and you're wondering how I'm even remembering some of these. Well, all we have to do is really select this tool and then we have access to all of those tools. So here's the number of supporting studs currently set at three and that's those three studs here. However, I could change that and I could say I want this now to be six, for example. So let's just say I want that to be six and take a look up here and we want to use that at again that the item container to generate 
and I'm going to generate based on this result once more and it gives me now the six studs in my wall so as we zoom in here you can now see that I get six number studs sitting under the wall as such you'll also remember that I split the top plate which was this value down here which is splitting the top plate again if I turn that off and I go back once more to the generate of, of the wall you'll now see that the top of the plate on the wall is now continuous as well and fundamental to all of these dual sets if I now go and move we say this beam and that beam finish in the selection and move it from here to here that if I now um, decide that I'm going to frame that wall once more and I go back here to generate the framing you will now see that when I generate that wall the complete framing gets updated with the new position of the pocket. I'm Keith Cotter, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in future sessions.